So you've had a new patio put in, and then a year later you notice it is starting to settle, starting to sink a little bit, and you're not sure why. Well, we're gonna go look at one. This is a new client of mine. We did not do their hardscape. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but their patio looks like they're having a little bit of a washout, a little bit of a settling issue. So we're gonna go take a look at that and see what the reason is and what the fix may be. So come on with me, let's take a look. So in a lot of cases, I'll get called in to do a planting design for a home that's already had their hardscape done. And, you know, sometimes they've done a really good job and other times there's some challenges. So you can see, I mean, this patio is less than a year old and we've got an issue. You know, I'll zoom in a little bit here. I mean, you can see where there's just all that stone dust and all that gravel washing out there. And you would think, okay, well, why is this happening? and it's a simple construction defect in the way that this patio was built so you can see if i step back that one edge of this patio is actually held up with a segmental retaining wall and that's totally fine um, that's one really common easy way of doing it but the problem comes they didn't take the wall far enough back so you can see that the wall stops right here and that's where we're losing all the material and the reason for that is that instead of doing a proper wall, they used this powder coated steel or aluminum edging. And let me tell you, if you want to separate grass from mulch or grass from gravel, that's great use for it. If you want to use it to try to retain material for a patio, it is the wrong, wrong choice. So relatively simple fix, but you can see that that stone is already starting to collapse and you're going to have a low spot and a washout here next time we have a good rain. Now one of the things that you always hear people say, including me, is that if you're evaluating a contractor you need to go look at a recently completed job. But the issue is, do you really know what you're looking for? So I'll point out a couple things that would have disqualified this contractor on this project just for me. So if you look at the end of this wall, you can see where that's just really kind of ugly and gnarly and what happened here is they should have used either a saw or a block splitter to make a nice clean cut on that and then take in a masonry hammer and kind of rough that up to make it match the stone edge i'm not quite sure what they used to break that thing apart but that is nasty um, the other thing that just kind of shows lack of attention to detail is if you look right above the drain tile they have drain tile under this thing which excites me because you're supposed to but just cramming in two random pieces of wall stone there, that's not cool. So I'm hoping that that doesn't have you freaked out and wondering, oh my gosh, you know, how do I know if I find a good contractor? And there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I actually have a video on how to hire a landscape contractor. I highly suggest you check that out, not to be overly self-promotional. But this kind of gives you an idea where it's little details that matter. So working with a great design professional, working with a company that has a great history doing this kind of work is really the way to make sure that you don't have those problems long-term. And then if you do have something, they know what they're looking at and how to fix it. If you found this video, useful or enjoyable or what the heck just go ahead and go down and give me a thumbs up down below and hit the subscribe button so you can see more stuff like this i'm going to be covering a lot of construction issues as well as we go because i find this stuff fascinating hopefully you do too i'm dave marciniak with revolutionary gardens until next time get outside and play thank you